the Mat was initially released on October 22nd, 1999, to great acclaim from critics and wrestling fans, but to a somewhat more mixed reception from professional wrestlers themselves, including several of those profiled in the film. A rare peek behind the curtain during a time when kayfabe was still clinging on for dear life, Barry Blaustein's documentary offered a look at the men and women behind the gimmicks and followed the stories of everyone from genuine legends to struggling upstarts, filming everywhere from small indie shows to backstage at WWE pay-per-views. Beyond the Mat was filmed over the course of several years, and even for the people who aren't necessarily wrestling fans, it remains a fascinating look at the subculture and the people who are involved in it. Not always a necessarily enjoyable thing to sit through, it is nonetheless a great piece of filmmaking and one of the better documentaries about the wrestling industry. It even has its own epilogue, telling viewers what happened to those in the film once the cameras stopped rolling. Of course, this was over 20 years ago, and the epilogue itself seemed out of date about six months after it was released. A lot has happened in the two decades since, as fans continue to discover and discuss beyond the mat. So what happened to those in the film, and where the hell are they now? Mason Ryan, Stevie Ray, Earthquake, Alundra Blaze, Norman Smiley, Zach Gowan, Bam Bam Bigelow. Ahmed Johnson, Tory Wilson, Buff, Bagwell, Robert Gibson, Dave Taylor, Terry Taylor, and Godfather's Homes. Dwayne Gill, Adam Bomb, Michael Hayes, Cor Von, S.A. Rios, Jim and I, the manager from Kai and Ty, Jim Powers, Francine, Jack Swagger, Mean Gene, Fatchick Thriller, Duke the Dumpster, Oklahoma Manta. What happened to that wrestler? Someone main eventing, which leaves me lamenting. What happened to that wrestler? Some since long forgotten, but their memories live on. Barry Blaustein. Director Barry Blaustein makes an appearance in the film right at the start of it, explaining what draws him into the oddball world of pro wrestling. He also provides a voiceover throughout and wraps things up nicely at the end. Since Beyond the Mat, Blaustein has continued to work in the film and television industries, he directed the 2005 movie The Ringer, and has been fairly quiet since. A forthcoming sequel to Coming to America, starring Eddie Murphy, is based on his original script. Darren Drozdov If I ever met Vince McMahon in person, I think I might involuntarily vomit all over the carpet at Titan Towers. Darren Drozdov, a former American football standout and prospective wrestler, made his ability to regurgitate on cue part of his WWE audition, as shown in the documentary. Droz, who was going to be brought into the company as Puke, became a member of the Legion of Doom and formed a memorable tag team with Prince Albert in his short WWE run before tragedy struck. During a match with D'Lo Brown at the October 5th 1999 SmackDown taping, Droz suffered a career-ending neck injury during a powerbomb gone wrong. Drozdov is nowadays confined to a wheelchair and requires in-home 24-hour care. He lives in New Jersey with his sister and her family and for a while wrote articles for WWE.com. Vince McMahon a wonderful, unfiltered peek at the madman behind the scenes. Highlights of Vince's time on screen include him running gorilla position, watching a tryout match, and, how could anyone forget, commentating on Droz's attempt at puking on command. WWE's Emperor recently turned 75 years old and still works about 18 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. He will outlive us all. Jim Johnston WWE's resident music man offered a rare glimpse into his process in Beyond the Mat, showing fans the thought that goes into some of our favourite themes. He was one of WWE's longest serving employees when he was let go in November of 2017, ending his 32 year stay with the company. Since then, he's been keeping relatively quiet, but did show up for a Q&A at 2018 StarCast event, and also created his first original theme for a while in 2019 for Ring of Honor's PCO. Jake Roberts One of the more unsettling aspects of Beyond the Mat was the decline of Jake Roberts, who was going through a real low period during filming. As well as revelations about his disturbing family history, Roberts was shown using and abusing drugs while performing at low-level independent shows. It was a sad sight for fans of The Snake, and the bad times would continue for many years afterwards. Until his pal Diamond Dallas Page took him in and got him on a program, that is. With the help of DDP, Roberts turned his life around, kicking the drugs and the booze, and getting into fantastic shape. His hard work was rewarded with a WWE Hall of Fame induction in 2014. These days, Roberts can be seen managing Lance Archer in AEW. New Jack 
New Jack, everyone's favourite neighbourhood psychopath, was shown attempting to transition from wrestling to acting in the documentary. Sort of if like Dwayne Johnson was a former bounty hunter who's likely to stab you in the head for a laugh during a match. His Hollywood career never materialised. Turns out Denzel didn't need a best friend, but his wrestling career continued, with New Jack typically caught in controversy wherever he went. He's still involved in the business, though usually in a limited capacity as injuries and age have limited what he can do physically. His life and career were profiled in a season two episode of Vice's Dark Side of the Ring, he remains unrepentant. Paul Heyman New Jack's boss, although remember that nobody is actually the boss of New Jack, was ECW head honcho Paul Heyman. To most, Heyman is best known as the on-screen advocate of Brock Lesnar, but he's also had a couple of spells in WWE creative. Outside of WWE, Heyman is co-owner of the Looking for Larry agency in New York and is involved with the running of his website, HeymanHustle.com. China the ninth wonder of the world was briefly profiled in the documentary discussing her larger-than-life physique and plans to have her jaw restructured in order to enhance her femininity. China's star power continued to rise after the film was released and was actually the intercontinental champion when Beyond the Mat hit theatres, becoming the first and so far only woman in history to win the title. Less than two years later, however, she would exit the company and, besides a tour with New Japan and a match in TNA, pretty much left the business altogether. She turned to acting and modelling and also appeared in adult videos. Sadly, China's story does not have a happy ending. She had struggled for years with substance abuse issues and died of an accidental overdose in April of 2016 at the age of 46. For years prior to that, China lived and taught English in Japan and had converted to Christianity. Mick Foley Mick Foley stated on camera that he wanted to be referred to as the world's most polite wrestler, but trying to grate somebody's face off with barbed wire or shoving a dirty old sock in their mouth isn't exactly textbook table manners now, is it, Mick? Perhaps the most memorable scene in Beyond the Map was the one filmed at the 1999 Royal Rumble, where Mick, as Mankind, met The Rock in a brutal I Quit match. Foley's wife and two children were shown watching on in horror at ringside as he took many sickening, unprotected chair shots to the head. Considering the insane amount of punishment he sustained during his career, it's little surprise that Foley decided to pack it in not too long after the documentary was released. Retiring from full-time in-ring duty in early 2000, Foley nevertheless stayed active in the years that followed followed, returning for brief runs or odd matches. He was inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame in 2013 and these days does a little bit of everything, from stand-up comedy and writing to spoken word tours and acting. Noel Foley Mick's daughter Noelle makes a couple of scene-stealing appearances in the film. She's previously flirted with the idea of following in her father's footsteps and trained at the WWE Performance Center, but had to end that pursuit when she was injured. She's now resting safely at home with me, her real-life shoot boyfriend. Sorry about that, clown man. Noelle's brother Dewey, who also appears in the film, has a role on the WWE creative team. Terry Funk Director Barry Blaustein thought he had documented the legendary Terry Funk's retirement on film. Well, he caught one of the 37 anyway. Funk continued to wrestle after the film was released, of course, his last wrestling match coming in September of 2017 at the ripe young age of 73. Though still active on the convention circuit, the Funker may be done as far as in-ring competition is concerned, age and injuries catching up to the hardcore icon. Well, I, I say that now, I'm probably going to look a bit silly when he shows up in a battle royal or something ten years from now. Funk, along with his brother Dory Jr., was inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame in 2009. Jim Cornette Regardless of what day or time you're watching this video, odds are that Jim Cornette is probably ranting about something somewhere, most likely the state of modern wrestling or his hatred for all things Vince Russo. These days, Cornette is more famous for his podcast and shoot interview appearances than his active contributions to the business, though he's had recent spells as a commentator for Major League Wrestling and the NWA. Jim, if you're watching, just know that I too think wrestling was better in the 70s and 80s, back when we were both stars and wrestling was real and tennis wrestling Brackets were believable weapons. Jim Ross Former Vice President of Talent Relations Jim Ross was on hand, along with Cornette, to watch and then critique the tryout match of two young upstarts in the film. The former lead announcer was inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame in 2007 and finally left the company for good in 2019. Not too long after, he signed up to be a commentator and advisor for the fledgling AEW. When he's not calling the action on Wednesday nights, he can be heard on his podcast, Grilling JR, or found looking at pretty ladies on Twitter. Good God almighty, Jim! That woman has a husband! Will somebody change the damn password? Roland Alexander 
The owner of the California-based indie outfit All Pro Wrestling, Roland Alexander, was shown in a not exactly favourable light in the film, hoarding prospective wrestlers' pay while running shows out of a dilapidated garage. Roland did get two of his guys a tryout in the film, with a little help from director Barry Blaustein, which he probably viewed as a great advertisement for his wrestling school. Unfortunately, APW became mired in controversy in 2001 when they were sued over the wrongful death of student Brian Ong. Ong was training with Dalip Singh, later known as the Great Carly, when the incident occurred. Despite being found liable for Ong's death and ordered to pay his family $1.3 million, Roland continued running APW until his death in November of 2013, aged 59. Mike Modest One of the students getting a look from WWE executives was Mike Modest, who was so much more humble than that braggart Mike Awesome. The talented Modest, who was labelled too big to be a cruiserweight and too small to be a heavyweight, found success not in the United States but in Japan, where he primarily wrestled for Pro Wrestling Noah between 2001 and 2005. Modest is now retired from wrestling and lives in California, where he is a father and works as an actor. Tony Jones Modest's opponent, Tony Jones, was famously told by good old JR that he would improve his chances of being signed if he put on a little more size in his upper body region. If his recent Twitter activity is anything to go by, the man in the black hat certainly has an appreciation for those with ample chests. Anyway, Jones, who was a standout amateur wrestler before going pro, worked in wrestling on and off until 2017 and did the occasional enhancement match for WWE, wrestling the likes of Raven and Eugene on shows like Jacked and Heat. He currently works as a network administrator and technology expert for a law firm in California. Dennis Stamp Poor old Dennis Stamp. Stampy became a meme before they were even a thing because of the scene where he took offence to not being booked on Terry Funk's retirement show and was shown doing jumping jacks on his trampoline in his underwear in order to keep in shape for his next match. Prior to his infamous appearance here, Stamp wrestled for the NWA and AWA in the 1970s and 80s and did occasional enhancement work for WWE. When his career began winding down, he opened up a pest control business, which he operated for 30 years. He passed away in March of 2017 at the age of 70. Spike Dudley Spike Dudley showed up to discuss his transition from mild-mannered English school teacher to battle-scarred ECW star. Following ECW's closure in 2001, Spike wrestled for WWE until 2005. After that, Spike would work for TNA and on the indies before moving into a career in financial planning. He currently works in asset management for Merrill Edge in Rhode Island and is married with two children. Coco Beware Blink and you'll miss it, but Coco Beware is briefly featured in Beyond the Mat in a scene where he speaks about letting his trademark mascot, a bird named Frankie, fly away. Sadly, three years after the completion of the film, Frankie perished when the apartment building Coco was living in burnt to the ground. As for Coco, he's in semi-retirement but still puts on his boots to play Weekend Warrior every now and again. The Birdman, who was mainly used in a comedy mid-card role throughout his WWE career, was a somewhat surprising entrant into the Hall of Fame class of 2009. He thanked them by by joining about 60 other former WWE performers in that class action lawsuit in 2015, which was thrown out in 2018. To be fair, it sounds like Frankie's friend probably needed the money. Earlier this year, Coco launched a GoFundMe to help raise money to pay for knee replacement surgery. Jesse Ventura Jesse Ventura shocked the world when he became governor of Minnesota in 1998. After serving a single term in office, Ventura stayed active in politics and has written books and hosted TV shows about conspiracy theories. Hey body, if you're not too busy, how about getting to the bottom of a lack of WWE title run for one Mojo Rawley? I mean, who's stonewalling this investigation? Jesse flirted with the idea of running for president in 2020, but ultimately declined. That's right, Jesse, leave it to The Rock. Save us, Y2 Dwayne. The Rock the Rock was on his way to becoming one of the biggest stars in the business when the documentary was filmed. In it, he plays the role of bloke who tries his absolute best to remove Mick Foley's head with a steel chair. He played the role well. Nowadays, he goes by Dwayne Johnson, and I think he's a tequila salesman and into movies or something? 